Hello and welcome to Watching Watches. Today I have a special review from a Sydney local, Susan Galvin, and her watch company is called Galvin Watch Company. So, quick wristwatch check to begin with. My uh, Casio G Shock DW5600. I'd like to thank Susan for loaning me these watches, and I also asked her if there's anything that she'd like to share while I do this review and she said that uh, she'd also like to thank everyone for her support. Um, she's had one very successful Kickstarter campaign so far and I believe she'll be launching another one in the near future. So on to the watches. Uh, she sent me two to review today. This is the one that I tried out wearing. It's called the Galvin LQ in white and the one my wife wore for a day is the Galvin Alku in peach. So they are the same case shape. I'll just put this one down. I'll focus on the white one and I'll uh, just pick up the peach one occasionally to show you some of the differences. Very nice packaging. Um, this came in another cardboard sleeve and then a few more boxes around that and bubble wrap. If you've seen the unboxing video, you'd know how well it was packed. Very nice solid box here. Uh, warranty card with an international warranty and it's a two-year warranty which I, I think is good it's a whole lot better than 12 months and a nice cleaning cloth as well what's unique about this company is that Susan is actually a watchmaker um, she's been doing it for over 10 years and if you live in Australia and you have any issues with the watch uh, Susan will be the one that uh, repairs your watch that you deal with uh, she's got a couple of other service centers around the world i think one in finland and uh, one in the united kingdom turning on the balance here it is a dress watch so i'm not expecting it to weigh too much obviously less than the, the divers watches that i'm used to so 62 grams nice and light uh, it was very comfortable when i was wearing it and this one might be a little less because the clasp is not the point 54 grams okay guys sapphire crystal check i'll compare it to my oris aquis which i certainly hope is sapphire for the price i paid for that thing sort of expecting around three or four bars so there I have four bars from the Aquas, and if I get a similar number of bars from the Galvin, then we know it's a Sapphire. Yeah, it's exactly the same. So that'll be a Sapphire Crystal there. Quick dimensions check. 38.5 millimeter in diameter. Lug to lug of 44 around 44 and a half millimeters and let's do this properly the lug width I expect it'll be 20 or 18 so we're looking at 17.8 or 18 millimeter lug width okay so I'll just leave this one in the background for now sapphire crystal uh, double domed so there's no distortion it has one layer of uh, clear anti-reflective coating on the inside. Uh, the dial on this one is, is white, but it, it does have a, a small amount of reflective particles in there. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but it looks different in different amounts of light. Um, I was actually in the, in the supermarket and I thought it looked good in there and also in nighttime because you get a lot of reflection of these high polish blue indices and blue hands so they are quite simple but I, I think it suits the design of the watch uh, what I what I didn't mention is that the dial the white dial itself actually has a slight curve to it uh, it's difficult to show on the camera you might be able to see it there at the three o'clock um, but when you do get the watch and have a look at it you will notice that and I think that's a nice touch um, it says Galvin Watch Company Automatic with the, the Galvin logo at the top. But it is quite small to see the watch company. I usually uh, I need my glasses to read that. 
So I'm not sure if it was necessary to write that, um, but that's just personal opinion. That's a lot better, the view of the, the watch now. While we're looking at the dials, I'll show you the peach one as well. Uh, my wife actually really liked this one. I'll put up a few photos now of the watch on her wrist. Um, her wrist is touch over 6 inches, around 6.2 inches, and it fitted her well. Um, she's actually quite difficult to impress with the watches that I buy. Usually uh, she says that they all look the same, but this one was a uh, instant love affair, so we might actually be buying this one later on from Susan. All right, so I'll put the peach one back onto the white. Um, the crown has a nice G logo there in focus. It's not a screw-in crown uh, because it's not a dive watch. So turning it like this um, straight away winds the watch. Uh, no date on this watch, so just one pop out. Hacking, of course, it's a Myota 9039. High beat movement, so... I think it's a 28,800 beats per hour. Onto the case, a high polished stainless steel case. Fairly simple in design, but Susan said that uh, she does prefer the look of a 1940s watches. So I can understand why uh, she has gone with a simpler design, but I do think it is quite classy. Um, I was wearing this one with a collared shirt. I think it. Uh, went really well with that, a business shirt. A couple of interesting aspects of this case is there's a line. You can see that it moves right around the case there. Just adds another uh, visual element. And also, it's, it's not, the, not the bezel, but the, the metal around the outside, um, just near the top of the case, it actually has a nice angle to it, so that transitions well onto the double dome sapphire crystal so guys onto the case back um, I will tell you that I have seen this case back on other watches um, which is no problems at all I mean micro brands might not have the resources or the, the money to develop their own case back and I think it looks quite nice a few specifications there um, stainless steel automatic sapphire crystal 50 meters so I mean you you might wash your hands with this one or, or get get wet if you're walking in the rain, but as it is a dress watch um, and it does have that leather band on there, you probably wouldn't, wouldn't be wanting to go swimming with it anyway. Now, Susan regulates all these watches herself. Um, she does receive the watches fully built, but she takes the case back off and does the same quality control checking that she used to do when she worked for Amiga, which I think is pretty cool. And it's unique to have the micro brand owner actually working on and uh, preparing the watches individually before they get sent out. So a uh, quick mention of the, uh, the leather strap. Uh, this is a deployant, one of the first times I've used a deployant. A couple of things I, I didn't appreciate was it was quite difficult to get that little the little uh, metal pole that holds it into place. I'm not going to take it off because I'm going to be able to get it back on. But that did take a few minutes. So if you want to adjust this one on the fly, um, you might be better off with going with a tang and buckle. Um, there are different choices in the leather length and also... Uh, the colors of the dial. I think there's a, a green uh, and a black dial color and another one as well. So I'm re really impressed with this strap. Uh, I think it really does uh, stand up to the quality of, of the watch itself and it, it will last a long time. Did take a couple of days of breaking in but all good leather straps do. Nice tan leather strap here and you can see the attention to detail as well. If we can get that into focus, you can see it there. It looks like laser etching, Galvan Watch Company. And that's also on the deployment as well. Um, you've just got the logo there. Uh, what did confuse me was um, 
these two keepers. I mean, this one might might be useful if you want to stop this from coming out. You could use it like this and put the keeper around there. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's necessary though. Uh, this one in particular doesn't actually do anything. So I'm guessing this is the same leather that's used um, for the tang and buckle, but instead of that, a deployant has been installed on that. Um, look, it didn't bother me. It didn't affect the wearability of the watch. Here is a quick look of the Alco on my wrist, which is 6.8 inches. I think it wears really well, um, which is definitely helped by those 45 millimeter lug lengths. And this would suit anyone with, you know, wrist sizes from six six inches or high fives. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of ladies up to perhaps seven and a half, eight inches. The cost of this watch is going to be around five hundred US, um, which I think is is fairly normal. Um, the, the movement is, is not Swiss, but it's a, a really nice high beat uh, Japanese movement. And I think you're also getting that reassurance and the reliability of being able to contact Susan and her being a, a watchmaker. So you do know that you are in safe hands if you were to purchase one of these watches. Um, check out Check out the old Kickstarter campaign, and you can still find that on the internet. There's plenty of great photos. I'll leave a link to the Galvin website in the description, the Galvin Watch Company. And there's also some really good photos there, so you can get an idea of the different colors and which one you might like. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe, and have a great day.